Well, we think that particularly for polyethylene, that's, that's the key commodity that we're focused on. It's the largest volume chem chemical commodity. We think pricing is at a peak. You know, it's 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 a dollar a pound now. A year ago, it was fifty cents a pound, and we think that's been driven primarily by supply shocks. You had a whole bunch of weather events that that caused a contraction in supply. Demand's been pretty strong throughout the uh, the pandemic, but now you have inventory levels at the producer level that are you know back to normal and actually on the high side. So we we think that that price is, has reached a peak and, and will start to pull back, particularly because the price outside of the U.S. is significantly lower, and that seems unsustainable to us. Sure, and I apologize for saying metals, <laughs> because the prices we're talking about, as you're talking about, do they actually derive from crude oil? And uh, as we're sort of thinking through this, we have seen crude oil prices roll over significantly in the past couple of weeks, but other industrial metals prices are holding up pretty well. So where do we get the prices that you're focused on? Well, what we look at are derivatives of oil. So the whole petrochemical industry is, is either starting with crude oil, they're starting with natural gas, they're starting with you know, ethane or propane, and then they're producing products that are either commodities or specialties, and, and they run the gamut. I mean, some of these commodity chemicals are at prices right now that we think are, are sustainable, others are unsustainable. It, it's really a mix. I think that's probably true on metal commodities too. It depends on the end market. Is, the, is there sufficient demand to, more, to warrant that tightness? But as, as supplies start to get you know, back to normal or even inflated, um, we think that there's risk to the to this, you know, inflation reversing into a deflation. Steve, it's Eamon Javers here. Help me to understand this analysis, right? Because you're talking about pricing power being peaked here uh, for some of these guys. But I wonder what the inflationary environment that we're headed into. I mean, we saw Janet Yellen saying yesterday it could be several more months of relatively high inflation. Doesn't that give some of these guys increased pricing power because customers sort of assume prices are going to go up a little bit over time as they're dealing with inflation in every other aspect of their business? Or is that not how it works? I think that's a very, very realistic situation for many of the, the chemicals that, that we work with. You know, let's just say, you know, a gallon of paint. You know, it's, that gallon of paint is, is just a formulation of a bunch of different chemicals. And everybody realizes there's inflation. And so those producers of that paint, and they can push that price. But when you're talking about polyethylene, you're really talking about a, you know, a business to business sale. Right. Big companies producing the polymer, big companies buying it to make packaging. And those companies are, you know, they're sourcing their products from around the world. And if they can get the product cheaper from Asia, they can bring it in. That's, that's where we really see the risk is, is that domestic price that we're seeing right now in the U.S. Is it sustainable when the price outside of the U.S. is significantly less? Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.